All right, happy Monday. I'm Justin. Oh, and I'm JP. And we're the podcasting dead. Time once again to talk about a very confusing episode of Fear the Walking Dead. I won't call this one quite boring. I mean, it was still a little boring. It was definitely a little bit more happening than other episodes, but nonetheless, it's still a little confusing. And we'll discuss it and get into it and see what we think this means. But before that, just a quick little introduction. Uh, we are the Podcasting Dead. We podcast, obviously, about Fear the Walking Dead, The Walking Dead, all that good stuff. But we also podcast about a lot of different things like paranormal stuff, conspiracy stuff, down to just what's happening in life type stuff. So if you are a fan of podcasts, please consider hitting that subscribe button. If nothing else, give us a like. It helps out a ton. Don't forget we're available everywhere from YouTube to iTunes, SoundCloud, uh, soon to be iHeartRadio and Podbean. If Podbean would ever get right, um, we're also, uh, where else are we? We're all over the place. So usually where there's podcasting, there we are. So just search for us if you have a more preferred platform and you can get us there too. But without further ado, so JP, what are your thoughts coming out of the 11th episode? Uh, man, uh, Logan is the uh, one of the crappiest villains ever. I'm just going to say it. Right? Yes. I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not crazy. I mean, he's just, do you feel threatened by Logan? Not one bit. Like- I mean, he had a chance to just take Morgan and Al out, and he yeah. didn't. I mean, I don't, I don't get what the bigger picture thing is here with him. Maybe it's because the season has bored me into a coma, and I've just not been paying enough attention, which is probably right. I was more, more entertained with Facebook and Instagram last night than I was Fear the Walking Dead. Even though, yes, I'll say this episode had a little bit more going, but yeah, Logan is a terrible villain. Yeah, what does he keep saying? It's like big boy, big girl stuff or something weird yeah, like it's, that. It it's, sounds like he wants to just put Morgan over his knee and just spank him. You know, you're bad. But yeah, you, you're just <laughs> you're so bad, Morgan. I don't know. Dude. I don't know, man. It's it's a very weird dynamic. And like you said, I mean, he could have done any number of things to Morgan and Al, but what he just kind of blocks the road off and. You can't go this way. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna, gonna kill you though, but you can't go this I'm gonna way. I'm gonna inconvenience you until you <laughs> tell me what I need to know. <laughs> Just, oh yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna torture you. I'm not. which they were gonna torture Dwight, but Dwight. But uh, but yeah. And then when they had a chance to really redeem the show, and Morgan put his staff, and we see Morgan's sticks breaking. So I guess that's some symbolism there. But we see Morgan take the pointy end of a stick and put it to Logan's throat. And I thought, here we go. We're mm-hmm. about to get into dark territory. Morgan's going to just sh- like go, you know, straight up Walking Dead. I almost feel like Walking Dead Morgan and Fear the Walking Dead Morgan are two different people. Yeah. And I thought, here we go. We're going to get Walking Dead Morgan. He's going to shove that stick through Logan's throat, and that would bring a lot and tie it in together, you know. Make it, and Morgan's going to find a balance of like, you know, I don't have to kill people, but if I need to, I will. But no, no, he doesn't. He just yeah. he steps back and we get another like, what is this? Like the 20th explanation for why he is the way he is from him. But yeah, and now we're getting this. So a lot of people, myself and JP included, were very excited at the uh, possibility of Madison returning, though she's got her haters out there. I feel like she was one of the better parts of the show, especially back when it was her, Nick and Alicia and Strand and uh, Daniel, you know, Um but it seems that she definitely is not the one that's been painting those trees. Yeah, finally got to the bottom of that. We meet a guy named Wes who straight up murdered a guy for stealing his book. wonder what kind of book it was. And I'll tell you what, if I were to go that route, there are a lot of people that have my DVDs and books, so they better be glad I don't follow Wes's don't want to kill example. Spree, yeah. yeah. But uh, and it's like a little manuscript or something he was like writing for his dead brother. But we find out in that book that he's the one that's been painting those trees. And so now Alicia is 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 she's now painting the trees to keep it going, and for some reason now she's able to kill zombies again. Even though the whole episode she couldn't bring herself to kill a zombie, I guess she was scarred from killing the one with all the radiated blood. I'm guessing what they're going at here is that Alicia knows she's going to die from radiation poisoning from getting that blood all over her. Because as much as I don't want Alicia to die, it it really. And it wouldn't surprise me if they didn't make this happen, but the blood all over her was absolutely pointless. Mm-hmm. You know, which, again, the Fear of the Walking Dead's definitely uh, not innocent of doing things that look like they're going somewhere and it's completely for nothing. But I feel like now it's just like going on Madison when Madison used to say no one's gone until they're gone. Right. Uh, I guess it was basically like it's letting her know that, like, hey, until you die, you're still alive. And so now Madison 
knows, I mean, not Madison, Alicia knows she's going to die, but she's going to continue on and try to be a good influence or a good presence and do the best she can until she eventually succumbs to, to death. But um, I was really disappointed that they just squashed that whole Madison's coming back thing. Yeah, dude, that does say it would have been great if Madison came back just in time to see Alicia die and learn that Nick's gone and, you know. Follow Madison and Morgan and Strand. And yeah, Daniel. at least she's still got her sweet, sweet Strand. That That's worth living for. Yeah, I mean, and we got to spend more time with Strand. Mm-hmm. Um, it was about Tom. Yeah, but it was still just really wacky. I mean, like, they pick up these guns, and one's got tear gas in it, and he shoots the zombie, and then you got a walking zombie tear gas bomb thing. And, yeah. you know, I, I I don't know. It was it was It was just really, I don't know. It's just like they throw a bunch of stuff together, and they're like, there's an episode. Let's go. Like, I, I just... I'm just so disappointed because I mean, let's see the the episode. I believe the episode. Cause let's see what what. Let's see what was the. Uh, I'm trying to see. Uh, so, uh, the episode I think when Madison died was actually called "No One's Gone." Mm-hmm. You know, so a lot of people, you know, were just really piecing this together that hey, Madison's coming back, and then she didn't, and you know, I don't know. I don't know the the whole Alicia thing, and I like this guy Wes. I think he's an interesting character, but um, I don't know if they'll really do anything else with him. And then he's like, "Y'all owe me a bike." No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> I just get tired of this whole "we have to help people." Yeah, man, it's like you said, it's, it's getting very cultish and very weird, and I just I don't know. It's, well, it's I mean, time for Morgan to just kind of move on and go ruin somebody else's show, you know. Sadly, yes. Like, well, bring him back to The Walking Dead and just, I, I, I don't want to say that Morgan couldn't carry a show. I feel like he could, but not with these writers. Maybe with some other writers he could, but I mean, just right now, I just, everything about him has just been stupid. I mean, he should have put the knife, he should have put that uh, stick through the guy's throat. Uh, just do anything interesting, you know, would be a, would be a plus. Well, they stashed those videotapes in that bank vault, too, which was... It was interesting. I get why she would want to protect him, but of course, and, and inevitably, it was pointless because at the end of the episode, Logan just rips the door off of it. Yeah, yeah. Now Logan's got him, and he's going to binge these videos, and you know, the first, the first, <laughs> this will be the first time anyone's been binge watched anything in the apocalypse in a yeah. long time, and yeah. sadly, there's not going to, it's not going to probably be all that entertaining. Um, but yeah, she'd just been better to like bury him underground or or something. I mean, what's it's just it's a lot of things they do in the show where you're like, what was the point of it? Yeah, yeah, man, I would love to see like Strand and uh, Daniel come to the conclusion that hey, Morgan's gonna get everybody killed. Let's figure out a way to take him out to where no one of body would know. Yeah, just some kind of like internal like struggle or conflict or something, man. Yeah, it um. And I, 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 so if Alicia's going to die, then what else is I, – I just don't – I don't know. They're picking apart the entire original family. Nope. But, I mean – Yeah, the Clarks will be gone once Alicia's dead. Yeah. No more Clarks. I mean, I just – I don't know, man. I don't uh, – I wish I had more. I wish I could be more enthusiastic. Like, if you go back – if you were a fan of The Walking Dead and you just found this podcast – Go back and listen to our reviews of last season of The Walking Dead. Like, there was so much more to talk about. Like, we loved it. It was good. And I've seen where people have said that it was bad, whatever. You know, whatever. To each their own. JP and I both very much enjoyed season nine of The Walking Dead. And I hate that the the reviews of this show that we've done have been so bland and blah. But it just, um, I don't know, man. It just wasn't, it's just not what, I don't know. It's just not being the show that I think it can be. Yeah. What do you think the show needs? I know we've asked this a million times, but what do you think? It needs some conflict, man. Like I said, I'd love to see a, a Strand and Daniel kind of be like, you know, we need to kind of turn things around. Morgan's going to lead us all to our death for nothing, which, you know, I mean, he has like five times already. They just didn't die because, you know, you wouldn't have a show. Right. I don't know what needs to be done, man. I just, I, I really, at this point, I just, it's it, like I said, it, it's, I, I hate to sound like a broken record. I just feel like there's nothing I can say that I haven't said already. But, I mean, I I don't know. Like, what? where is it going? You know, are we, I mean, I don't know. 
I really almost want to wrap up the podcast because I really don't have anything to say. I'm just a stumbling idiot. But I mean, it was just nothing really about. I mean, it was more action, so that's cool. And next week's episode looks like it's going to have a ton of action, mm-hmm. but there's just nothing that just draws me in. You know, there's nothing that leaves me th- like The Walking Dead. Each episode, even even uh, the slower episode of two of season nine. Still left me something to think about the next mm-hmm. day. I'm not even thinking about this show until we have to podcast about it. Yeah. Like I don't walk away from it thinking about anything. Um, and excuse me, my allergies have kicked in, so I am a, I am just a sniffling fool right now. Um, but let's see. So I'm looking on different websites to see what people are saying. Not so much about whether they liked it or not, but yeah, man, I haven't seen a lot of praise for it. I mean. No, I don't think anybody's praying. And then you see all those promos. It's like can't get enough of Fear the Walking Dead, and it's like, oh no, I've I've definitely um, I've definitely had enough. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's I don't know, man. I wish that uh, I wish I would stop saying I don't know. I, I just I, I don't see how the people putting this together can look at their final product and be like, man, this is really awesome. You know, this is something to be proud of. People are going to dig this. I mean, mm-hmm. ugh. Yeah, it's uh, it, it. I don't know. It needs a pick me up. It needs something. I don't know if they're heading. Do you think that their goal is to tie into the Rick movies, or they're heading to the main show? Or I mean, you just you you you, you want to think that all of this crappiness is leading to something, and and my fear is that it's not. It's just at the end of the day, terrible writing. <laughs> yeah, and I mean the the Walking Dead. Excuse the me. cast is pretty freaking full as it is. You know. Hmm. I mean, you add like like. 10 new characters i mean geez i mean and that that show is going to be you know stretched too thin they really need to like kill some of these characters i need some kind of drama and as much as i hate to see madison go if they're going to kill her off man kill her off in a good fashion like make it mean something make it set something up you know just like it, it, it's very scott gimple-ish i mean just like his whole we're gonna kill carl because that's gonna affect the way the war is gonna end mm-hmm. you didn't need to do that in the comics spoiler slight spoiler alert but you know carl didn't die and rick still chose to keep negan alive in order to set an example of of what you know you could have found another way for rick to realize that there there's a better way out there than you know and i'm sorry but the show bores me so much that yes we're gonna dive into the walking <laughs> dead a little bit but you know, there was it was stupid. It was just a stupid un I, like we we killed Carl because it's like no, there's another. You could have done that any number of ways. You could have honestly, as sad as it would have been, as much as I would have hated to see him go. That's how Morgan should have died. Morgan should have died with all of his peaceful hippie mumbo jumbo. And that I mean, otherwise, I really thought that's what they were setting up for because I knew in the comics that Rick decides to keep Negan alive to set an example for people that violence isn't the only way and yada yada yada. And I totally thought the whole reason Morgan had this transition is because it was coming around full circle. Because Morgan was the one that saved Rick in the beginning. He was his first, you know, glimpse of like good left in humanity. Uh, you know, just all of these these things. And then, you know, he comes back around and finds him after Morgan has seen the ugly and found the good. And he's trying to instill this good into Rick and that Morgan was going to end up dying in a very sad way. And to honor his memory, that's why Rick refuses to kill Negan, because he knows that that, you know, Morgan saved his life in the beginning and he owes that to Morgan so that when it comes around, he couldn't save Morgan's life. So what he's going to do is spare Negan's life in Morgan's honor. I mean, Morgan built the jail cell that Negan is living in. So on top of that, I mean, just so many things setting up for what I thought they were going to do. And even though I saw that coming a mile away, it was still going to be very, very gut wrenching, sad and just awesome to watch. And then they didn't. They were like, we got to kill Carl because Carl, the kid who's been progressively getting more and more violent as the shows went, becoming more and more of a badass, all of a sudden has a change of heart and is like, everyone should live. Yeah. I mean, he that's not even something he's been preaching for more than like an episode or two before his death, you know? So it's just like that kind of writing is what we have on fear. Just this very, un, like, very n- nearsighted, just like. Uh, tongue-in-cheek kind of bs writing i don't know how else to describe it yeah man and just give us a better villain you know give us a villain. i mean logan just uh. i mean i really like right let's get a i mean i don't know let's get a let's get a i mean i would love to see like another sect of like the whispers going up against them or like see the start of the whispers and they might you know i mean just it's 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 a it's a walking dead universe you have so many this is set in the past this is still not up to where we are on the walking dead i mean we could see the beginning of the whispers 
in and, Texas or something, and they migrate. I mean, it's just so many opportunities there to really just like give Walking Dead fans just this awesome connection between shows and stuff. But instead, no, let's just have a feel good time with the the most peaceful cult of all time. Yeah, dude. I mean, it's Texas. There's a lot of options. You can give it like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre kind of spin, or like have like like cartel dudes, you know, hanging around. I mean, that's what I've said it before in another podcast. But seriously, that series, the remaining that I like so much, that's what they're up against right now. Is this Mexican cartel that has uh, seized control of a lot of these oil fields? And the guy, like you know, the whole theme of that book was that these soldiers were put in place of the apocalypse, and it's a zombie apocalypse story. But it's like. Their job was to, they have these bunkers that are absolutely filled to the brim with supplies to keep civilization going and stuff. And their job, if the government was to collapse, was to establish government. And so this guy is, you know, now going up against the cartel to, to get this oil. And, and yeah, it sounds kind of, but I mean, it's really good. Like, they're good villains. Like, the way they ki- they kill his friends right in front of him. And it's really kind of, really screwed up the way they do it. And they just set the stage for, like you know, he just the author just sets the stage for a villain that you hate. And this guy, but the villain's got his reasons. And it's just good, much better writing. I mean, like with this, they're like, all right, we got two people who want to do good for people, and we're going to put them against each other. That's what people want in the Walking Dead world is a hug fest, yeah. you know. Because Logan's ultimately thinking he's helping people, too. So it's like, we're, I'm helping people more than you are, Logan. Yeah, dude, it's so convoluted. And I mean, if you really feel like Morgan and them are that big of a threat, I mean, you had a chance to take them out right there. And and, and no, no, cause I, I don't know. Yeah, why do that? Why do that? That would just be. And I mean, I really thought for a second, for a split second, I was stupid enough to think we were really going to get dark. Uh, e- even after Morgan didn't put the thing in his throat. I thought he was going to gun down Morgan and Al right there after she, you know, had like hid the tapes and stuff. And it was like, oh, man, this is no. Mm-mm. Yeah. You has make, any make a detour. Has any person died this season? Not that I can recall. I I don't think has anyone died since Jimbo uh, jumped off that roof. Nope, I don't think so. Jimbo, uh, gosh, take her out first, man. Yeah, I've said it before, real. but take her out first. Yeah, I'd, I'd love for them to just come across that uh, big rig and just be nothing but blood and guts and carnage. And yep. I mean, if you didn't listen to our other podcasts, we've stated that we really aren't big fans of. Um, you know, we're not that big of fans of the truck lady because she's just too cliche. I mean, like, I know several truck drivers, and they don't dress, act, or talk that way yeah. at all. And that's just too cliche of a truck driver. Like, I don't know. I don't know. And, I mean, I wouldn't mind it. Hell, I, I started writing a little zombie book, and I had a character named David who was straight up inspired by a trucker I met at a gas station right down the road. Mm-hmm. Just be- But he was just such an enormous personality. Like, I created the character based off of him, and he was a little bit... A little bit cliche, but not nearly as cliche of a truck driver as this lady is. And then, of course, they had the, once they threw the song Convoy into the show, I knew it was game over. Yeah. Anybody that would put that god awful song into their show, they're not really worried, you know. And I feel like they're just coasting off the name of the show too. Like that's really the only reason. And if this was any other show, it'd have been canceled. Yeah, dude, I'd love to see what the ratings are. They they can't be good. Let's see. Let's see if I can Google that before we wrap this up. Let's see. Uh, season. Five ratings, of, but it's it's been renewed for another season, right? Yeah, didn't I read that? Mm. Ah, it's not giving me oh, AMC ratings. Let's see, season five ratings. Although it doesn't do nearly. This is off of um, TV series finale dot com, uh, and I quote: "Although it doesn't do nearly as well in the Nielsen ratings as the original series does, the Fear the Walking Dead TV show has been AMC's second highest rated series Jesus. as a less popular prequel to the Mothership, which uh, has a sequel on the way. How much longer can it continue? Will Fear the Walking Dead be canceled or renewed for season six? Stay tuned. But I guess you said they've already been. Yeah. I mean, the ratings are not. Uh, yeah, they're just not not good. One point nine million. I mean, it got over a million viewers, but I don't know, man. So I don't know. Let us know what they need to do in the comments. I mean, are you liking it? Did you like this? I mean, I do feel like this episode had a lot more going on. I like that we flipped between different storylines. We got Strand and Alicia. We got Morgan and Al, and you know, we got a new character, Wes. And I actually like the character, Wes. I see. I mean, hell, he's the only one who. Actually, yeah, that's the only human that's died is the guy that Wes killed for stealing his book. Yeah. 
<laughs> so I mean, you know, it, it's uh, but I just I need something to happen, man. I need some big th- big stake, something big at stake. You know what I mean? Like when we were up against Negan, even though that drug and drug and we complained, I don't think it bored me this much. And it's like at least there was something big at stake. Essentially, the group was fighting to get the freedom from under you know Negan's rule and. With the governor, they were fighting to, you know, get rid of the. Well, they were fighting because he had taken people. There was always something. There was always some big. There's like no end to this. Like to say to what end? It's like the writers would be like, we we don't know yet. We just we're make, kind of just making it up as we go along, and we don't really have any kind of long term goal. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Other shows have suffered from this before, too. But So, yeah, let us know what you think. Until the show makes me entertained again, I don't think we're going to do any ratings. Because we used to uh, we used yeah. to rate it. Like The Walking Dead, if you listen to that podcast, we rate each episode, you know, one to five, uh, what we thought of it. And um, I, we haven't rated any of this yet, just because there's not been any that's... I'd, just, I, I'd give it an N, you know, needs improvement. N I needs them for yeah. What was that? What we got in school was in yeah, needs sounds improvement. Familiar, it yeah. sounds right. Yeah, yeah. Like needs improvement. I think my dad got a lot of those. I remember finding some of his old report cards and seeing a lot of those. Yeah. But let us know what you think. Are we crazy? Is this show awesome? And we're just too dim with it to pick up on the bigger picture. If we are, please explain to us what that bigger picture is, because I would love to love this show. Like, I just let me love you, Fear the Walking Dead. All right now they won't. They keep pushing me away. But hey, tomorrow is our paranormal podcast. Oh, yeah. What are we getting into tomorrow? The Mothman. Oh man, we're going to be talking about the Mothman on our paranormal podcast. We did Skinwalkers last week. If you haven't heard of Skinwalkers or you want to know more about them, go to our uh, page and look for last week's Skinwalker. We describe, we talk about what they are and things like that. And we'll do the same thing with the Mothman tomorrow. And then Wednesday. Do you know what we're talking about on our conspiracy cast? Oh man, I've got some ideas, so we're uh, we'll give you a little preview tomorrow. Okay, so you got to stay tuned to find out what we'll be talking about on that. And then, of course, Thursday is mail call, and on Friday you'll get another para, uh, real life paranormal experiences Ooh, podcast. Yeah. The first one went out last Friday, so make sure to check that out. And until tomorrow or whenever you listen to us again, uh, oh, you know what? I completely forgot. That's how I'll just blow this episode. Maybe don't forget to check out our Patreon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Patreon.com, and then you can search for the the Podcasting Dead on there. We try to put links under the, the, the podcast, but they always mess up. Like, mm-hmm. it always cuts out part of it. So, basically, just go to Patreon, search the Podcasting Dead, and uh, everything from a dollar up to $20 to however much is a big help. And at 20 patrons, we are going to have a drawing for a sweet prize pack. We're more than halfway there, and we appreciate the hell out of everyone that's already pledged and contributed. And uh, speaking of patrons, man, Caitlin Howard down there in Texas, she says she's putting together a really, really, really sweet like '90s nostalgia package that she is uh, going to be sending our way. So, so she didn't send that already. No, it hadn't oh, been sent. Okay, she just cool. she says she keeps finding stuff she wants to put in it. Well, that's really sweet. I can't wait to see that because I love my '90s nostalgia. Yeah, no kidding. How are we going to decide who gets what though? I, I don't know, man. We gonna rock paper scissors? Uh, it could be could rock be. paper scissors thumb wrestle. Oh man, I, I don't like that tickling my, contest. My my hand get too sweaty. My hand get too sweaty in that too. That could be to your advantage. Uh yeah, it could be. I could lose my grip. I mean, we can do a tickling contest or hugging contest. Nah, I tickle my fancy. I don't know. Pillow fight. And no, those can get a uh, get dangerous, man. Mm. And them feather pillars, they 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 get heavy sometimes. Them feller, them feather pillars. Yeah. But yeah, so I uh, can't wait to get that. So check out the Patreon, and uh, we will catch you uh, again tomorrow. I'm Justin. I'm JP, and we're the podcasting dead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>